Arsenal have announced Vinay Venkateshan will leave the football club after a 14-year stay. What does that mean for the Gunners moving forward? We'll also reflect on his time in North London. All of that on this bonus edition of the Chronicles of Aguna podcast. I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon. Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to another edition of the Chronicles of Aguna podcast, a bonus edition because we already brought you a show earlier today, a show in which we discussed Bukayo Saka. Uh, we talked about the injury concern uh, that was reported with regards to him uh, just last night, Wednesday night, Sammy Mockbell uh, of the Mail reporting that Bukayo Saka is carrying an Achilles problem at the moment that stretches back to last season. We discussed whether or not he's being overplayed. We discussed uh, whether or not this is going to be a bigger problem in the future. You can catch all of that, as I say, on the show that we released earlier today. Also, just a quick reminder, if you haven't checked it out already, uh, we did a cracking episode on YouTube only. So if you're an audio listener, you'll have to go over to YouTube to get access to this particular episode. But I sat down with European football expert Andy Brassel to preview Arsenal's Champions League group. We discussed Sevilla. We discussed, uh, of course, uh, PSV Eindhoven and Lons, uh, who all join us in Group B. And we discussed Andy's brand new book as well, which is going to be a cracking read. So make sure you get your pre-orders in for that. The link is in the description of that particular episode. Let's say a few hellos before we dive into this Vinay Venkateshim news. Um, I have to say I'd heard whispers and rumours of this um, over the past few weeks, but it's finally been announced by the football club, David Ornstein, uh, of course, uh, breaking the news uh, as well this afternoon, just prior to the club uh, coming out and confirming it. Um, let's say some hellos, though, as I say, before we dive in. Big hello to Tamina Ahmed, who says, bye-bye, Vinay. Uh, good riddance from Arsenal Football Club. I think that's a little bit harsh, and we'll get into a little bit about why uh, later on. But she does go on to say, hi, Harry, how are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. Hope you are well, too. Uh, Delisu says, Vinay is a likeable bloke. Uh, Paul Nell says, Vinay got us out of the dark ages. Put some respect on his name. Uh, Peeny Ween says he's likeable, but I don't think he's irreplaceable. Big shout out to Joey Leo, who says, cheers, Harry. I was able to catch your hour slot on the 27-hour podathon. But that was a huge moment I'll oh, make just to to speak to commentary royalty like Peter Drury, one of my heroes, um, and, and have him comment on some work that I'd done was just amazing. And I'm so grateful and thankful to Mike uh, for sorting that out, for sorting it out so that we were both uh, on the same hour. It is so, so appreciated. And actually, I think Mike has released videos of each of the slots uh, on the Gooners podcast uh, YouTube channel now. So you can go back and you can check all of those out if there's one particular part uh, that you wanted to check out. Uh, big hello to Steve Stone, who's with us, wandering minstrel. Hope you're good, man. I feel like I haven't spoken to you in ages. Um, hope you're well. Um, Joey Leo says, nobody playing darts today. I think just as you said that, someone's got... No, they're putting their jacket on. No, it's a bit late in the day now. Um, a few... People have cleared out from the office at this point, uh, which is why these booths are free for me to podcast. So, um, yeah, the likelihood of you catching a live darts game here at 90 Min Towers right now uh, is not very high. Um, right. Let's uh, let's get into this news then, shall we? Let's um, let's uh, share with you guys uh, what Arsenal uh, have put out in terms of their publication around this. If I just share my screen with those of you watching us on video bear with me just a second here we go uh, here it is uh, Vinay Venkateshim uh, to step down uh, from Arsenal next summer uh, this is what the club had to say Vinay Venkateshim um, the club's CEO has confirmed he will leave next summer after 14 years with the club uh, Vinay said this was a tough decision but it is time to pursue another challenge. Now is not the time for goodbyes, as I remain focused until my last day and supporting a seamless transition. Our co-chair, Josh Kroenke, commented, the board is fully supportive of Vinay's desire to pursue his next challenge. Whilst it is business as usual, with everyone focused on the season ahead, we'd like to take this moment to thank him for his contribution and long service. Vinay will always be part of the Arsenal family, 
and is always welcome back at Emirates Stadium. Change and succession is something the club is well prepared for. The board remains committed to our strategy and will address leadership change as we continue to drive the club forward. So, as I say, this is something that's been rumoured for a, a good few weeks now. Um, I'm not surprised to hear it. Is the timing right in terms of the announcement? Well, I think what has probably happened here, and I'm, I'm speculating on this, of course. I don't know this for a fact, uh, to be clear. But what I guess has happened here is that um, Arsenal have been approached by members of the media who have said, look, we know that this is happening. This is the story. Uh, what's the deal? And Arsenal, as a result, um, have probably bought themselves a little bit of time and then prepared this announcement uh, so that that can be dropped essentially soon after uh, that story is broken by the journalists. Journalists often do that. They often give clubs or, or people that they're writing stories about a bit of a heads up, a bit of a warning, um, a bit of a grace period so that that club or person or individual, whatever, can get their ducks in order ahead of what's to come once that bombshell breaks. Um, but yeah, uh, so that's um, that's the... Uh, that's the news. He's off and he's off in the summer. Who's going to replace him? We don't know at this moment in time. Um, what's it going to mean from a footballing perspective? I don't think it's going to make that much difference from a footballing perspective. I've got to be honest. Uh, some people might disagree with that. Some people might agree with that. I think that Vinay Venkateshim, as was pointed out in the comments by Paul Nell, has helped us come out of the dark ages. But the problem is, and the thing that I'll probably struggle to shake, is that Vinay Venkateshan was also involved with the people that took us into the Dark Ages, in my opinion. So it's hard for me to say that his time at Arsenal was 100% positive or that it's all good and that he only deserves praise. I think he's had criticism in the past, rightly so, along with others sitting at the top of our football club for the fact that our fortunes changed on the pitch quite dramatically. You know, there was a lot of noise around Arsene Wenger at the back end of his tenure. And I, I know that there were certain people on that board and, and in, power, in power positions at Arsenal Football Club that were desperate to get Arsene Wenger out of the door. Arsenal did that. It happened. He moved on. But in the short term, the club didn't exactly kick on, did it? You know, we found ourselves um, appointing Unai Emery, who clearly wasn't the first choice. In came Unai Emery. The first season was OK in terms of, you know, we narrowly missed out on the top four, which was our goal to get into the top four. We went to a European final. We were embarrassed in the end by Chelsea, but that isn't necessarily on the club's ownership, is it? Um, and, and, and the club's board. The second season under Unai Emery was a car crash, was a disaster. It became apparent very quickly that the recruitment we'd done during Unai Emery's tenure was not the right recruitment. And, you know, Mikel Arteta had to deal with that in the early stages. We had a period where, you know, we, we had a squad that was over bloated, full of players that just weren't good enough, that just weren't at the level required, that clearly didn't have the attitude and fit tactically into what Mikel Arteta was looking to do. And we've had to go through a transitional period over the course of the last three years to get ourselves into a position where we are competitive again. So on the one hand, you can say that Vinay was a part of the group that drove us into the ground. If he's been at the club, you know, for what, 14 years, as we say. But on the other hand, he's also been a part of the efforts to get us out of, uh, of the woods, which kind of suggests that his role, perhaps in the, the nosedive of the team and of the club might not have been that significant, but he was still there and he was still a part of it. And although his role has changed over the years and we can speculate around how much input he had on the football side of things, I think it's a mixed time at Arsenal Football Club, whichever way you look at it. I think that's the fairest way to break down Vinay Venkateshwam's 14 years at Arsenal. Now, if Arsenal go on and win a Premier League this season or go on and win a Champions League, then he'll be remembered in uh, much fonder terms. And that's just the way football works, right? Um, but yeah, we're going to have to wait and see if that happens. I think from a footballing perspective, as I say, I don't think too much is going to change. I don't think that Vinay is involved in footballing decisions. Um, that's very much something that Mikel Arteta and Edu work together on. Uh, we know that they consult the likes of Per Mertesacker uh, when needed. Uh, they also use um, Richard Garlick, who came into the club not too long ago. Um, 
you know, he's a part of that team as well. You get the feeling that Vinay Venkatesham, if this was being talked about a few weeks ago in certain circles, then you get the impression that that decision has been communicated to the club with good time. They've got a whole season to identify somebody to take over. Um, and, and the interesting thing about whoever comes in is, is, is what that does to the dynamic. It works quite well at the moment. We've got people within the club that are clearly there to make footballing decisions, Richard Garlic, Edu, Mikel Arteta, etc. You've also got people that are there to make financial decisions. Tim Lewis, uh, Vinay Venkatesham, I think, is certainly somebody that leans towards the finances and the operations of the club on that side of things, rather than taking an interest or, or having a real big voice in the footballing side. So, you know, if you bring someone in who's kind of in between those two things, does that mess up the dynamic and the balance a little bit? Do you look for a like for like replacement? I know we're not talking about a player here, but you, you get where I'm going with this. So I think this is, um, this is a really, really interesting thing now. How are Arsenal going to react to this? I don't think it'll impact us in the short term. Um, I don't think you're going to see the impacts of Vinay imminent departure on the pitch. I, I, I don't think he's that connected to that side of things, as I say. So there's nothing really to worry about from that perspective. Uh, but as I say, I, I sit here intrigued about how they're going to go about replacing him. Um, where I will give Vinay Venkatesham his flowers is the way he's dealt with um, sort of some of the issues that fans have voiced over time. Um you know, fan engagement. He's been a big driver of this. He's attended meetings. He's always been present. Um, and I think for the most part, and, and those on the Arsenal Supporters Trust will probably have a, a more informed opinion on this, but he always seems quite open to me, or at least as open as you can be in a role like the one he has. Um, and I think he was a big part of Arsenal's U-turn, if you like, in terms of how they dealt with fan engagement. Now, a lot of this comes down to the Super League. If you go way back to when the Super League was proposed, when Arsenal signed up along with five other big Premier League clubs and the likes of Real Madrid, Barcelona, Juventus, etc., etc. If you go back to that point, that was almost the breaking point. That was the point where everybody associated with Arsenal, including Stan and Josh Kroenke, realised, hold on a minute, we're not reading the room right. We are so far removed from what our supporters want from what our supporters hold dear, um, from their views, from their expectations. That was when, when all of those people turned up outside Emirates Stadium that afternoon to protest against the idea of the Super League. And I remember this because I was there. I, I couldn't believe how many people turned up. There were tens of thousands of people out in front of the armory, um, uh, wrapped around the stadium, making their feelings known about what would have been a disaster for the Premier League and for English football. Um, and uh, and from that point on, it was KSE's commitment to open up those lines of communication and listen to what the fans had to say. Josh Kroenke took a far more um, sort of <sighs> proactive approach, if you like. Um, you could argue that he was starting to do that prior to the Super League stuff. But certainly after it, I thought he came out and he spoke quite well. He won people over. And as I say, he opened up those lines of communication, which ultimately uh, have done more good than anything else. Now, yes, KSE were probably the drivers behind the idea, especially Josh, of opening up those lines of communication and, and sort of making that commitment. But Vinay was the one that went out and made that happen. I've mentioned him turning up to... AST meetings. I've mentioned him uh, being engaged with supporters. I've mentioned him coming across as really open and approachable. All of those things have been key in building that relationship once again between the fans and the club. The club have done their bit off the pitch. Mikel Arteta has done his bit on the pitch, but also off the back of, um, you know, the, the sort of warmth that's been created because the team are producing and because it's a very likable and lovable team. But then he's he sort of carried on the work that started right from the very top and built that connection um, at a level now between fans and players. And that is absolutely massive. Mikel Arteta can't do what he's done if the first bit doesn't happen. And because the first bit um, has been driven 
quite significantly and quite largely by Vinay Venkateshim. I think you have to give him props for that. Like, are we going to lose, um, you know, are we going to lose anything on the football inside with Vinay departing the club? I don't think so. Are we going to lose anything um, in terms of our attraction when going to sign players? Are we going to be worse off when trying to do deals? No, because I don't believe Vinay Venkateshim is responsible for any of those things. His role is very much an executive role and very much uh, different to the roles that we associate as being ones that directly impact what we do on the pitch. So, look, wish him all the best. Um, you know, I really do. Um, interesting to know what that new challenge is going to be. Does he stay in football? Is he going to go and take up a job at another football club? Is he going to move away from football entirely? I'm not sure. Nobody knows. Um the other big interesting thing, of course, is who's going to come in. But again, we don't know. Uh, so I prefer at this point anyway, not to speculate about that. Vinay is with us till the end of the season. And hopefully we can make his departure a memorable one by going out and um, and uh, and winning something, wrapping something up. And then that way he'll be remembered as the executive, as the CEO uh, that helped Arsenal to a Premier League title or, or better still, a, a Champions League trophy. Who knows? Who knows? Um, right. Any questions, any thoughts? As I say, not massively surprised by this news based on some whispers and stuff that I'd heard. But I mean, yeah. Um, is it a feeling of shock? No, because of what I've just mentioned. Am I disappointed? Not particularly. And that's not being disrespectful to Vinay. But as I say, I'm interested in the football and I don't think this impacts the football in any way, shape or form. Um, I hope that the dynamic doesn't change upstairs based on who they bring in, because I think it's working really well at the moment and long may that continue. So I expect a like for like replacement in terms of who comes in to slot into that role and, and not really have a hand in the football operations. Uh, there is talk of Arsene Wenger. Uh, Rumours already have started uh, about the potential of Arsene Wenger maybe stepping into this type of role. I don't know, perhaps there is a place for Arsene Wenger back at Arsenal Football Club, but it would be one that is, or one that needs to be, in my opinion, removed from the football inside. Not because he doesn't have anything to offer there, but you can just end up uh, creating sort of blurred lines. And, and if you have those blurred lines and people are reaching over into other people's areas of responsibility, there can be conflict, there can be disagreements, and there can be that issue of people pulling in different directions, which we've experienced at Arsenal over the years. So fingers crossed, uh, whoever comes in is the right person. Wish Vinay Venkateshim all the best, as I say. Um, but is it one I'm going to lose sleep over? I, I'm not even being horrible, but no, um, I've got to be honest. OK, let's take um, let's take a, a look at what you guys are saying. A big hello to Cesar, who says, hey, Harry, haven't been able to catch a live show in a while. Just wanted to say I really like your new end show outro. Thank you very much, mate. Uh, appreciate it. Um, Wandering Minstrel believes that uh, Vinay could move and that Josh takes a closer look at everyday things. Just my view. So a suggestion that Josh Kroenke could not replace Vinay with somebody like for like and instead take up more responsibility himself. Um <laughs> Terry Grant says, Eddie must be gutted Vinay's leaving as he'll have to make his own tea now. Oh, come on, come on. Uh, Robert says, the Cronkies realised after the weak the U statement and the European Super League reaction, how loud and proud the fans of this club were. Yeah, and listen, I think that, you know, the, the reaction, which I've already mentioned in terms of the protest and all the rest of it, just highlighted how far removed and how detached our ownership were with what we wanted as a fan base at that point in time. Um, I, I have to say, and and people might not like this, and I, and I know that there are people that watch this and listen to this that were involved in, in the We Care Do You statement slash movement, if you like. And I, I, you know, I'm not, this is not due to any individual, but I, I was kind of disappointed with the way that started and the way it fizzled out. Because I felt like at the beginning, everybody's intentions were great and everybody was, singing from the same hymn sheet and there was a real concerted effort to try and um and and you know enforce change and try and make things better for us as a football club but along the way i felt like it, it broke up into factions and ultimately when that happens 
well, that's how people divide and conquer you, right? It, it just, for me, that whole thing around We Care Do You, it was great at the start. But I remember, for example, I remember um, somebody saying to me that because I wasn't one of the founding people, um, that I shouldn't have been talking about it on the radio. Well, that was my platform. You know, I have that platform and I had an opportunity to get a message out and I, I was briefed on what I should and shouldn't say, et cetera, et cetera. But still had people within that coming at me and saying, why are you talking about it on the radio rather than me? Well, because I am on the radio. That's my job. And I have that opportunity in that platform. And so I became a little bit disengaged from it. I've got to be honest. The intentions were great at the beginning. And I don't doubt that most people within that kind of conversation were were looking to do good. But there were people in, you know, it, within those groups that were all involved in it whose egos just got too big for it. I'm sorry, that's the truth. And um, and ultimately, I think that led to it kind of fizzling out in a way that it, it really shouldn't have. Uh, Steve Stone says, I can't lie. I'm still upset about the U European Super League. A big black mark against the owners, in my view. However, I appreciate the work they've put in since. Yeah, and listen, you, you don't have to forget, but I, I guess we should forgive because I think what we've seen is a concerted effort to put that right. Much more interest taken in the club from, in particular, Josh Kroenke. That interest has come not just in terms of how present he is, but in terms of the investment that we've made as well, um, which is obviously great. Uh, Peeny Ween says, Steve, without that Europe. Uh, I keep calling it Europa, the European Super League happening. It's possible that they don't sit down and make the plan that's progressing us. Now, I agree with that. It was kind of a blessing in disguise, wasn't it? Um, it, it really, really was. Uh, a few of you asking me the Wenger question. I, I've answered that. I've touched on that. Clock Orange uh, says, no, no, we do not need Arsenal. We need to bring Arsenal only, uh, in only after we win something. Um what else have we got? Uh, Peeny Ween also makes a good uh, a good point. Do you think we'll do extra diligence for his replacement based on previous uh, Raul-shaped mistakes uh, and because they have the time? Yeah, I think it was important that they had the time. And although we've heard about this today on Thursday, the 14th of September, and Vin I will, of course, remain with the football club right through until the end of this season. I think the club will have been aware of this decision way earlier. And, and, and would have had even more time to be able to get their ducks in order with regards to their replacement. So I trust them to um, to move forward. Uh, Robert says, uh, no way will Arsene Wenger become CEO too old. He'd be more of an ambassador if he came back. Uh, could Ray Parler be the next CEO with, with the return of the Tuesday club? I've done a fair bit of work uh, with Ray Parler recently. Um, and uh, would I make him CEO? No. Would I love to go out for another drink with him though? Yeah, absolutely. Um, just not suited to that role, uh, in my opinion. Uh, some of you calling for David Dean um, to come back. Um, Matthew says, why are YouTubers so sensitive? I think you guys take your role in the fan base far too seriously. I don't take my role in the fan base seriously at all. I don't think I'm any um, more important than any other Arsenal fan out there. And, and, and I honestly do believe that. That's not just me uh, playing the humble card. I genuinely do don't think that I have a special place or that my opinion uh, deserves more credence or, or, or more respect. I simply, you know, have a platform that I wanted to put that message out to. And, you know, people that were involved in it took exception to that for some reason. Um, and that's where that point comes in about people's egos being too big. Because if I was trying to spread a message and trying to, um, you know, do good, then I wouldn't care whose mouth it comes out of as long as that message comes across. But clearly there were people that had an issue um, with, uh, <laughs> with me being the one saying it. Well, if you're on the radio, mate, you can say it, but you're not. So <laughs> that was kind of where I was just like, whatever, man, um, I'm, I'm not going to, not going to, be a part of this um if, if that's what it's going to be essentially a dick measuring contest which is what it turned into uh for some people most people that were involved in it the vast majority in fact with the exception of one or two um were fantastic and were doing it for all the right reasons and were driving it and putting their own time into it and their own money into it and all the rest of it and they deserve um lots and lots of respect um 
but yeah anyway i don't want to dwell on that too much um are there people playing darts now in the office i think they are i think they are is that ramiro yeah he's getting ready to throw a 180 i don't know um but yeah anyway um there you go uh robert um who i know uh was you know really a big supporter of this uh said you're spot on uh re we care do you some were too concerned about not upsetting their relationship with the club and losing their team biscuits absolutely absolutely uh says i says harry's gonna go and beat that guy at darts after the show i'm not very good at darts i gotta say um i gotta say i'm not Right, guys, uh, I am going to leave it there. Uh, just wanted to hop on and bring you guys uh, some thoughts on the breaking news. Vinay Venkateshwam will leave Arsenal uh, next summer, ending a 14-year stay with the club. Don't forget there was an episode earlier on today that you can catch up with. It's on the YouTube channel. It's also uh, wherever you get your podcasts. Do check that out. Don't forget to check our YouTube uh, video out with Andy Brassel. Looking ahead to our Champions League group. That will, of course, be valid all the way up until we play PSV Eindhoven at Emirates Stadium next week. So plenty of time to catch that one um, and, uh, and and plenty of time for that one to stay relevant. That's why I wanted to do it uh, a week ahead of time. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I will see you all tomorrow uh, with more. Um, until then, um, take care. All the best and goodbye if I can find the outro. But there we go. See you later. I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simi.